still have on my computer the outline that you gave me mm -hmm. that we can go mm -hmm. back and plug things in and mm -hmm. search it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that's the good thing about it. Yeah. It's not just somebody yeah. dictating it to exactly. us, but you give it to us so we can go study, study. for ourselves exactly. in our own time. Exactly. And, and, I appreciate it. That the rain and spirit to go and search out. Yes. Yeah. And, 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 and that's the thing about. Best thing could have ever happen to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and, and that's the thing that you get to a point where you begin to understand certain things because I had to get to a point where I had to understand it wasn't about me and who I'm teaching. Mm -hmm. It was about God's word because God has to be the one to give you the, the aha moment. Mm -hmm. You see, I, I couldn't be the one. I could teach you. I could preach that I'm blue in the face. But if God does not grant you the repentance and the acknowledgement of the truth, you still won't see it. Right? And for those that God makes it clear all throughout his word if you're searching and seeking for him you'll find him because he's very close that's right that's right and even even not un understanding we still want to know the truth yeah yeah mm -hmm. it, so many people have turned their backs on it because mm -hmm. it was afraid of the truth yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, even them not knowing mm -hmm. they don't want to know because of what they've been taught exactly. so you have lost all these friends people that you knew mm -hmm. that have literally turned their back on you because yeah. they don't want to know yeah. and that's the sad part and that's what baffles me is that if we claim to want to be Christ-like, and we claim to have the Bible as the only infallible word of God, and we claim to do all of these things, everything that we do is based, even if we have a man-made doctrine, is based off of the Bible. So why is it that when we talk about the Bible, there's a problem? I, I, that, that baffles me, even to this day. Religious people base their whole teaching and living based on Scripture, but yet they don't want to talk about Scripture. And like you said, they don't want to know truth. And I always say that people really don't want the truth. They want to be reassured that what they have been taught is truth. That's right. You see that? Truth is it pertains to us. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It's all truth. It's all truth, but you got to write. You got to write and divide the word of truth. Uh, remember, those are the seeds that you're planting to be harvested later. Mm -hmm. So as the seeds are planted, yeah. then, then you're Amen. growing, and then it's going to harvest later. Because uh -huh. see, maybe the seeds were planted to me 60 years ago, uh -huh. to I'm um, starting to understand the rightly dividing the world, and I didn't get word, and I didn't get into that until a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all it, that it takes time, time of um, of growing mm -hmm. underground before yeah. you sprout. And that's why it's a beauty, uh, because notice, God works at his own time. You see, we think that we can force God into doing something we want him to do, it, right? Especially as parents. I know my parents, we pray that your kids just get into the Bible, get saved, and do, but it's not about, it's not about what you want and when you want. I, I wish they get saved before I get up out of here. Well, it might not happen that way. You might leave before they get saved. Right? Because God does not operate on your time. He Amen. operates on his time. Right? Amen. So understand, Amen. like you said, you could have somebody could have planted the seed, but you had to go through these things in your life to make you an effective witness today. Right? Because there's a lot of things that I went through that I went through that I could I, I understand now. Right? Because had I not gone through that, I may not would have been able to reach a, 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 a certain number of folks because I wouldn't have had a testimony. Right? Now, sometimes I can relate to certain individuals because I used to be you. You see that? Like, it, it, it's, 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 it's one thing to uh, 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 talk about a situation vicariously through somebody else's experience. But when you have experienced it, it means more when you can say to a person, you know what? I was just like you. Okay. Amen. You see that? I was just like you. And, 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 and I get that from a lot of young people when preaching the word. When they don't understand the right to buy the word, I, man, it, 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 I could relate to them because I was you. I was humming. I was dancing. I was do, shouting. And I was you. You see that? I was you. I would say I feel the Holy Ghost coming, and, and I knew how to gimmick you. That's what it was. I knew how to do that to motivate the crowd, motivational speaking. I, I'm very good at that. So I was you. But if had I not done that, I, I may not be able to relate to this, that gentleman like that. You see that? I, I want to make two statements now because Kim brought something to my mind. <laughs> but I, I wanted to say, like all of us coming from the denominational uh, setting, there is a, a level of innocence in ignorance. But there's a fine line because now when the, when the innocence 
when, when the ignorance be, gets, gets the information, now the line is drawn. You're either going to accept it because you are searching yeah. for the truth, mm -hmm. or pride is going to kick in and you're going to reject it. Mm -hmm. And I've experienced that with a lot of preachers that I've tried to bring this message to. Mm -hmm. Preachers that I thought loved us, mm -hmm. that wanted to know more truth, because they used to call us for, for information before, yeah. and now they don't want our information. Mm -hmm. now, now, what Ken said, it brings me back to John 15. Well, Jesus said, I am the vine and my father is the husbandman. Mm -hmm. The husbandman is the one who takes care of the ground. Yeah. So he makes sure the ground is fertile. He makes sure that all of the thorns are out of the ground so that the vine can grow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that's in God's time. So God is doing the fertilizing yeah. of the grounds of the people's heart. Yeah. And, and when it's time to grow, then they'll catch on to the vine, which is Christ. Yeah. Right? And, and I tell you, man. I'm glad I'm, I'm in the vine. Yeah. And, and the thing about it is that there's certain things that should and need to be disputed. Mm -hmm. But then there's other things that, you know, that really doesn't need to be disputed, but it could be talked about. You see, that you don't don't beat somebody down when it comes to, well, should I can I drink or can I not drink? Mm -hmm. hey, hey, just be sober. Mm -hmm. If you feel like you, you want to take a drink every now and then, who am I to condemn you? I'm not. I'm not here for behavior control. That's Amen. God's job, Amen. right? I, I know my position. Amen. My job is to teach you truth, right? Whatever you feel that you need to do, let Paul is going to get to in Romans 14. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind, right? Wow. Red wine is good for you, right? That's, so, right? So that's what they say. It's good for the heart. So if you want to take a drink every night, as long as you're not drunk, because if you're drunk, Paul says, do not be drunk and uh, uh, be sober and vigilant. Why? Because if you're drunk. In the state of mind that you're in, you can't be focused on Christ. That's right. And if you don't want to take a drink every now and then, I won't condemn you. There you, there you go. <laughs> either way, either way. I, I would recommend, Paul said, I would recommend that you be as I am. I never drunk, so I would recommend that you do that. But. And, and a lot of times the truth does evoke change because regardless of how we, where we came from the other denominational church, mm -hmm. regardless if they'll ever admit it, you, they, the truth did evoke change because they changed certain things in the world. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. So regardless, it'll, it'll touch their hearts and yeah. touch them in a certain way. They'll never admit it. Yeah. They'll yeah. never want to come completely fully, you know, admit the full truth that yes, you know, hey, you were right and yeah. we didn't listen to certain things. And, but they changed certain Yeah, they did. The, 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 the Sunday after we left, they changed them. So <laughs> the Sunday after they, they got us out of there, they changed they changed something in their wording that we had brought to their attention. So, But like you said, that, that and, and those are things that really, it's not about, you know, sometimes, you know, you feel like when you're arguing with somebody about something that's not the word of God and they realize that you were right, and you really want to say, see, I told you. See, you but, but when it comes to the Bible, I don't get that feeling. I don't get that feeling to say, see, I told y'all. Because it's not about me. You see that? It's not about me. That. Now, when I'm talking about something that's opinionated and you see my opinion, then, yeah, I'm, yeah see, I told you. But, but when it comes to the Bible, I, I don't have that. Because if you do it and change it, I don't want you to change it because I said it. I want you to change it because you know it's true. Yeah. You see that? Amen. And a lot, you know, so 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 those are those are the different things. Go with me to Philippians 2. Philippians chapter 2. And I'm gonna finish this up and then we're, we're, we're gonna get out of here. I was gonna talk about 2 Correct 2 Chronicles 7.14. Oh man. But I may uh do that another time. Uh uh, look at Philippians chapter 2 and look at verse number 14. Excuse me. Philippians 2 chapter 14. Do all things without what? Murmurings, murmurings and what? Disputings. disputings. What, what are murmurings? You know, like talking under your breath. Talking under your breath, complaining. Yeah. Like, look at him. And he always, you know, she always, you know, don't do things like that. And without what? Disputings, right? Why? That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without what? Disputing. Rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Oh, man. Right? So don't do these things and murmur, hey, hey man, look at, look at sister so And then this person go back and tell that person. Now you can be reproved and rebuked. Right? That's why you don't do those things. Right? 
So you have no need to be to be uh, 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 rebuked for those different things. Now look, go back to verse 12. Look what Paul tells him in verse 12 before you even get to verse 14. Now this is Paul writing a letter to the Philippians. When we went to Acts chapter 16, we saw that Paul actually traveled to Philippi. And uh, remember, now, now in Acts 16, when he went to Philippi, who started the first church there? Who was the person he went to? In Acts 16. The lady in blue. Yeah. Lydia. Lydia. Lydia, right? So so because understand that normally Paul, when he went to a place, he always went where? To the synagogue, to the synagogue first. But they remember they didn't have one in Philippi because that was a Roman country. They was on the seashore. So they was on the seashore. Yeah. And they started the first church of Philippi in Lydia's house, right? So understand now Paul is, has written a letter to them, right? So look what he says. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always done what? Obey. obey. When you say we're not under the law, we're under grace, that's not saying, hey, woo, I can do anything I want. Notice it says you're not what? Under the law, but you're what? Under grace, which means there are instructions th that you should follow. Right? So understand that. He's saying, as you have always obeyed, not as in my what? Presence, Presence only, but now much more in my what? Yes. See, look, that, that's the integrity issue. Don't just behave because I was there, but behave when I'm not there, right? Even as parents, you teach your children to behave even when you're not around, right? That's the purpose, right? When you raise your children up in the admonition of the Lord, now we're going to go out and do some things. Everybody has done it. If you, Everybody in here has had a mother and a father at some point or somebody who raised you that you disobeyed, right? So understand that you may go out, but understand that if you've taught them the right way, they're going to remember those things. Because there was a lot of things that I would do because I wasn't in the presence of my parents, but there were certain things that I just knew not to do because they had taught me better, right? So, so, so understand that there's some things that, you know, God bless us all. <laughs> but, but notice what it says, but now much more in my absence do what? Work out your own what? Salvation. With fear and trembling. Notice people use this verse to say, see, you got to work for salvation. Notice Paul does not say work to be saved. He says work out your own salvation, meaning you already have it. Now you just got to walk in it. You see that there's a difference. And he says with fear and trembling. Then the next verse, verse 13, says what? What's the very first word? For who? It is God. For it is God which worketh in you. But hold on, Paul. You just told me to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. Now you're saying it's God who works in me? That's right. See, your work is the work of faith to study the scriptures. And then what? It's God which worketh in you both to do what? Both to will and to do his good pleasure. And then he goes to say, do all things without murmurings and disputings. Mm -hmm. Right? Go to 1 Timothy. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And look at verse 3. <coughs> Just that fine line I was talking about. Yeah, that's what I, I, I just thought about it when you said that. Uh, look at verse 1. Let as many servants as are under the yoke count their own masters worthy of all what? Uh -huh. That the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And they that have believing masters, let them not despise them, because they are brethren. But rather do them service because they are faithful and beloved, partakers of the benefit. These things teach and exhort. This goes back to what Paul is saying, right? If it's a doubtful disputation, let's let them have it, right? Let them have that. But when, so, but when it comes to the doctrine of God, there's, there's, there's things that need to be stood up for, right? Look at verse 3. Now, Paul is talking to Timothy in a local assembly as, as this one is. If any man teach otherwise and consent not to wholesome words, things that edify you, right? When it talks about a believer, you come to church to be edified and sanctified. Sanctified means set apart. Edified means built up in your inner man, mm -hmm. right? You don't come to church to get emotional, right? Although the word of God may get you to a point of emotion, 
because of what's being said, but understand that your job is to understand sanctification, how to be set apart in this perverse world that we live in, mm -hmm. and also and how, do you, how do you become sanctified and set apart? You got to be built up in your inner man, edified. But right? it only comes through sound doctrine. And it comes through sound doctrine. That's what Paul is saying to Timothy. These things you ought to teach and enjoy. Wholesome words. Even the words of our who? Lord Jesus Christ. Because they come from him. And to the doctrine which is according to what? Godliness. Godliness. Now, so when it comes to things that are, that are no longer doubtful disputations, but are doctrinal things, the reason people can't get it in verse 4, the first reason is why? Right. He is proud. That is the number one reason why people can't receive this truth. They're too proud. Mm. They're too proud to say that I was wrong, you was right. And really, it's not about who is wrong and right. It's about what the truth is. But people are too prideful to say, they're too prideful to say that I, they were wrong. And they're definitely too prideful to say that their parents were wrong or their grandparents or their bishop or their favorite uncle or whoever taught them. Right? They're too proud to say that they were wrong. Because if you're not right, then you're what? Wrong. Right? I mean, it's no big deal. If you're not right, you're wrong. Okay, I got some things wrong. Big deal. But I was only teaching what I thought was right. There's no problem in saying that. But the reason you can't say that is because you what? You're too proud. And then when you're proud, you do what? Know nothing. Knowing nothing. That's why you can't learn anything from the denominations. Yeah, because they don't know nothing. Because they're, they're too they're proud. They're too proud and they're too... Um, yeah. They know nothing, so you can go to as many as you want to. Yeah. But you're, we're not going to learn anything. They're not going to learn. Because Same result. Too proud and too ignorant. And when you're proud, it leaves you ignorant. Because you, you don't want to know. Right? Doting... Uh, it says doting about questions and strikes of words. That's all they want to do is go back and forth. Semantics. Deal with different, what well, this word say. No, no. It's about, it's, God meant exactly what he said. You know, people want to use semantics and play with words and all of this. But God meant just what he said and said just what he meant. Where I've come with envy. See, when you do this, that, that's why they're envious. Right? Strife. Railings. Evil surmisings. Right? Perverse what? Disputing. Perverse disputings. Right? Of men of what? Corrupt minds. See, when you get into doubtful disputations, it's because men of corrupt minds. They're perverse disputings, right? I'm not going to go back and forth with you on whether you should drink or not. I'm not going to have a whole conversation about that. Listen, brother, I would recommend that you don't, but if you take one every now and then, is God going to send you to hell? No. I'm not going back and forth with you about that. That's not, now, if you're talking about how I'm, i got to go be... Repent, be water baptized, and go and, and offer animal sacrifice. Now I'm going to go back and forth with you in the word on that now, because now that has that has some bearing on your soul. Right. You see that? That's not doubtful of disputation. That's something that you need to hear, right? Uh, and and then it says what? Well, and destitute of the truth. You know when you have somebody that's homeless, they're destitute. They have nothing. These people are destitute of. They have no truth. Destitute of truth. Supposing that gain is what? Godliness. From such do what? Withdraw ourselves. All is health, wealth, and prosperity. God wants you to be rich and God wants you to do the how you got a tithe because why do you, why put me under the tithing when God says I've been I, uh, he came to deliver me from the curse of the law? See, tithing, believe it or not, has a curse to it also. Mm -hmm. See, everybody wants a tithe to be blessed, but when you don't do it properly, you're supposed to be cursed. How can you take the blessing and not the curse? Israel couldn't do that. They couldn't decide. That's right. They either had to do it and be blessed or not do it and be cursed. You see that? See, they're preaching all of these things according to their program. You can't do Those things are doctrinal issues that need to be disputed. Right? And obviously, there's a respectful manner and way to do it, but it needs to be disputed. Pastor, that's that second chronicles you're talking about. Yeah, I should. Let me see. How much time do we have? Go back to Romans 14. And 90% was not doing it. What's that? And 9% was not doing yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> one, one comment. Go ahead, Ken. But, but uh, like here at the end, it says, From such uh, withdraw thyself. Uh -huh. You know, and that's like without condemnation. Because if you withdraw yourself, you're still feet down. Yeah. You withdraw yourself. Yeah. So it says right here, too, uh -huh. withdraw yourself. Uh -huh. 
so that um, the spirit can work on your brain, right. and, and, you know, in your hearts. But if you stay in that denomination, you, 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 you're going and, to be everything. And a lot of paragraphs. And a lot of times, people I've talked to different people and. You know, uh, different religions, and they say, "Well, I love the organization because I've grown up in it." But I know the truth. See, it's going to be hard for you to really fully preach and accept truth when you're under a certain people that don't teach and preach it. You see that? You can only stay there for so long. Yeah. Otherwise, you're going to conform, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And that conformity may be small, but it's conforming, right? And it perverts. It perverts. And it perverts things, right? See, you can say, well, it's no harm in being water baptized. See, that's the first thing. It's no harm in doing it, but it is harm. When you're believing that you need it for salvation, that's harmful. You see, and that's how they start out. Doubtful did it. Well, it well, I'm saying, but you know, the, the water just represents, no, no, that All of that is wisdom of words that takes away from the effect of the cross that Paul said, uh, 1 Corinthians 1, 18, right? Those are wisdom of words. And anytime you do that, it takes away from the cross work of Christ. So it's not about what well, it's not. No, no. It's about it's either it's right or it's wrong. It's for you or it's not for you. Right? Pastor, and, can you go uh, back to which group that, that scripture? Uh, because I'm looking at I'm looking at the word perversion, perverse disputings, uh -huh. and that's in connection with destitution of the truth. Exactly. So like like these new Bibles that they're coming out, they're perversions. Uh -huh. So they're destitute of the truth. truth. So yeah. therefore they're they're not edifying uh the whole Bible is not good. Yeah. If one verse is wrong, the whole Bible is wrong. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And that's the and I have a lot of discussion with people about Bibles and things, and I have to show people the differences in the yeah. different Bibles because I study a lot of those different Bibles, you know, to, to, to see the differences because they take out whole verses, you know, they take out uh, different words and change the different words because in some most of the Bibles, even from the first verse, if you pick up any Bible, the first verse it says. Uh, uh, Genesis 1 and 1. Uh, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the what? Earth. Earth. That's the first verse. Every other Bible, other than the King James Bible, will say, in the beginning, God created the heavens with an S. Mm -hmm. You see that? God didn't create the heavens in the firmament till the second day. Right? You got to keep reading down. See, but understand, that mistake in the first verse of the Bible is huge. That's huge. Because in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Right? And his whole program in the Bible is focused on what? Heaven and earth. Right? Then he created the heavens, the you know, the, with the stars and the files of the air on the first, second, and third heavens and all those different things. Right? But understand in the beginning he didn't create all of them. In the beginning, he only created earth and heaven, singular. Right? But that the other versions of the Bible, they messed that up. Just the first verse. And whenever you're starting right off, you're starting off not on the right foot, you're starting off from the left foot. There you go. There that you go. Very beginning. Yeah, very beginning. The, the very beginning. That's that's all it takes. Look at Romans 14. Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye, but not to do what? Yeah. Not to doubtful disputations, yeah. right? Don't receive them to conform and you know uh -huh. go over different things with them, right? But also bear the infirmity of their weak. Bear with them. Because they, they don't know, they're just ignorant. They're babes in Christ. They don't know. I don't care how long you've been in church. If you don't understand doctrine, you're a babe in Christ. Look at verse 2. For one believeth that he may what? Eat all, eat all things. Another who is weak eateth what? Herbs. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. But God has what? Receive. God receive you whether you eat meat or not. If you're a vegan or not, right? Now, when you do it because it's in the law and God says, don't eat this meat, and I'm doing it for a religious purpose, then that's not a doubtful disputation. You see that? But if you're in Christ and you're doing it because you just are ignorant or you're doing it because it's healthy for you to do, they, I, I would, okay. And if I go out to eat with you and I know that offends you, I will eat it. That's what Paul is going to begin to say in this chapter, mm -hmm. right? If it's going to cause you to stumble, I just won't do it, mm -hmm. right? Now, when I leave you, I may have to go pick, pick me up something to eat, you know? But for the sake of you, I got to, you know, that's what Paul is saying in love, how we ought to treat one another, right? Because there are certain things that I'm able to do because I know more, mm -hmm. right? I'm not saying lawless things. I'm talking about things such as eating meat and not eating meat. Because I know that. Paul says that everything that's been received with thanksgiving, I can eat whatever. But somebody who's been steeped in, in, in religion and keeping the law of Moses, they may not understand that. So what you do, you bear with them, 
Because God, the same way God receives you because you eat meat, God receives them also even if they don't eat meat. You see that? So you, that, that's the same way you got to bear with them, right? And look at verse 4. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? Right? I can't go to your job and tell you how to do what do the work on your job, even though I supervise people at my job. I can't do that because that's your boss's job. I can't go to hit your job and tell you what to do. That's your boss's job. That's what Paul is saying here. Who art thou that judges another man's servant? I can't just use somebody else's just somebody else's employee, not mine. Right? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yet he shall be holding up for who? God is able to make him stand. Right? It's not about you. It's God that's able to do that. Look at, look at verse 5. One man esteemeth one day above another. Another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully what? Persuaded. In his own mind. Right? Now, you got Christmas coming up. Right? Now, when you look at Christmas, it's a pagan holiday. Right? It has nothing to do with Christ. It has nothing. To, but, but the people use it for that reason. Now, that is a doubtful disputation. If you want to celebrate it, be my guest. Because we celebrate, those of us who know the truth celebrate Christ every day. Because he lives in us, right? But if you're fully persuaded that you did some things about Christmas because I know truth, I don't do anymore. That's me. I'm fully persuaded in my own mind. If you want to do it, I'm not going to come to your house and condemn you. You see that? Because those are doubtful disputations. Right? There's certain things that because of the knowledge that I have in scripture, I don't do. There's certain things because whether people have the knowledge or not, they choose to do because it's a tradition for them. It's not going to see you to heaven or hell. You see that? And, and I see people, I'm in a group on Facebook, uh, a dispensational group, and oh man, people talk about Christmas and they're, they're killing the people. This is a pagan holiday, you shouldn't do that. I'm like, and I, I put the same scripture right here, Romans 14 and 5. Listen, because you don't do it, have to, it don't mean God going to bless them or curse them any less because they, they celebrate Christmas. It's a time for joy. Use it for the benefit of the gospel. It's a time of joy. Merry Christmas. God bless you. First Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. You see, that's all you got to do. And, and, see, but people, from work. Yeah, people argue and go, go dispute things that have nothing to do with nothing. And I'm so glad that Paul addressed this in this um, verse of Scripture here. Mm -hmm. Because he said God received us all. Oh. You know, so yeah. God is in control of his own creation. Yeah. He's yeah. in full control. So yeah. and and then I was looking at um oh God. Where um oh, I lost my phone. What what is it talking about? This the same these same scriptures here of um because in the in the end the Bible does not speak to practical day to day behaviors or, you know, not, uh, not, not directly, necessarily, yeah, not, not necessarily. Directly. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, you know, and, and Paul is letting us know that we don't have to use this against one another because yeah. in the end it's all about righteousness. There you go, there you go. And some days, you know, it has nothing to do with, because and, and, and we, I, and we, you know, we last year I went over to Christmas and when Christ was born, broke that all the way down from the days and all those different things. But understand, for those, now that you know the truth, whether you want to do that or not, has nothing to do with nothing. You see that? And when people tell me Merry Christmas, I say same to you, or Merry Christmas to you. I mean, it doesn't really bother me to say it or not. I just know the truth Amen. about it. You see that? That's the only difference. Amen. Right? And that, that go ahead. And the same people that have that, you know, other people for celebrating that or for, you know, indulging in that, they, they don't have nothing to say when it's time to take a day off work. For yeah. Them. I was just <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. the food. They yeah, you're right. Because I got to work. Know? Shoot. So, so that's true. True. <laughs> and they want a present too. Yeah. And, and and understand who would have had a problem with eating and not eating Israel. back here? Israel. Israel, because they had certain dietary laws. Next week I'm gonna cover uh how it how it broke yeah, how it broke down from when God told Abraham no he could eat meat. Everything was good. Then he gave Israel. Why? Because he sanctified them by setting them apart. You see that? So there's certain meats that they couldn't eat. Paul says now we can eat all things. But understand in Romans 14, Paul is dealing with those Jewish believers in the body of Christ. Because we don't dispute over that. Gentiles, we didn't have no law. We always ate everything we want, right? So understand that. And today, nobody's really going back and forth over who can eat meat unless you deal with somebody with another religion. 
you know, that, that, you know, that keep the law and all of that. But most law, law teaching denominations today who claim Christianity, you know, they don't, they're not telling you to eat certain meats. Nobody keeps that law, right? But they keep some other ones, right? But understand, so doubtful disputations, this could be the things that, that like drinking, uh, what are some things that people Smoking. kind of, Smoking. Some things that people, I had somebody just asked me a question about that, right? And I say, uh, and I'm going to cover next week, all things are lawful, but all things are not expedient. You see that? It's lawful for you to go get a glass of wine because that God is not condemning you, but at the same time, if you get drunk, that's not expedient, right? That's not expedient. It's lawful, but it's not expedient, right? And that's what, uh, that's what draws the line because people think grace means do whatever you want. But grace has instructions and responsibilities. It's not do whatever you want. It's and doing things according to the glory of God. And then, then Paul used all of this really to say that some of us are spiritually weak. We, there you and go. And others are spiritually That's how he started it out. And for those that are spiritually weak, then we have to lift them up yep. until they come to that place of there you strength. Go. Yeah. And you're not going to do that by telling them don't do this don't and don't do, this do that. Don't do this and don't do that. Yeah. Because it's just like even with the holiday, Christmas. You're not going to tell somebody and bring them to the knowledge of the truth by condemning them because they're celebrating it. You're not going to do that. When people ask you, well, why don't you have a tree? Why don't you have a... Do Jeremiah 10. This is, what, this is what the origin of that is. Jeremiah chapter 10. And you take them to it. This is why I don't do it. You can you, if you do whatever you want. right? If that's what you want to do, be my guest. But those are doubtful disputes. It has nothing to do with salvation. You not if you put up a Christmas tree, it ain't gonna God ain't gonna curse you because you put up a Christmas tree. God ain't gonna tell you you're not welcome into the kingdom because you put up a Christmas tree. Doubt from disputation, right? It has nothing to do with nothing, right? But understand when you treat people, treat people with love. Understand that some people are weaker in the faith than you are. That's what Paul is describing here, right? And those Jews who would have been in the body of Christ, and notice Paul calls the weaker brother those who follow the law. You notice that. But those of us who are strong are those who understand that we're not under the law, but we're under grace, right? Amen. And we'll get into more of that next week. Uh, but everybody, uh, uh, enjoy yourselves uh, this holiday season. Uh, enjoy yourselves and uh, just use this time to share the gospel with somebody. I mean, why not? I mean, because it's good. And, and, and this is a, a time everybody's usually nice this time of year. You know, everybody's loving this time of year. So this is a time where you can fellowship, right? Amen. So uh, God bless everybody. Uh, any questions, comments, observations? So we're back in service next Sunday. Yes, yes, we will have service next Sunday. The next two weeks, we're going to be off uh, as far as Wednesdays. Because this Wednesday is the Christmas Eve, and then next Wednesday is New Year's Eve. So we won't have the Wednesday night Bible studies. But next, sun next Sunday, we will have service unless we don't want to have service. So we're right. going to be bringing the new year in as individuals, however we... Yeah, I was thinking about doing something together. Yeah, I was doing something about that. We could bring it in at somebody's house partying. Because it's yeah. the same thing anyway. But <laughs> but, I, no, but I wanted to get to... We may get together at somebody's house and kind of do a little something. Because, you know, because tradition taught us we had to be in church. At 12 o'clock to bring the new year. Walk and I around, would, walk around but, the building with campus. Yeah, when I was young, I would go to the club at 10, <laughs> go to church at 11.50, right, right. pray, and then go back to the club. Right? So once again, that meant that meant nothing. I should have just stayed at the club. Right? So so <laughs> that's tradition though. But uh yeah, we may uh yeah, we may do something for New Year's and we may uh Get, let's all get together and just eat and fellowship, bring in a new year, play some games and do all those things. Yeah, we 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 free. We we can do we can have fun. If you're gonna talk about the dietary laws next week, do we need to bring a covered dish? <laughs> yeah. That's a good point, yeah. We bring 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 the right dish. Yeah. Yeah, uh Ken has uh you can uh Ken uh let let's pray us out, let's pray us out. Father God, we thank you now for your goodness and your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for the truth of your word. We thank you for liberty in your word. We thank you that all things are lawful to us, but we understand what's expedient, oh God. We thank you right now for uh, every member of, the, of, this, of this particular local body, those who watch online and support online. We thank you for that. Uh, Father God, we just thank you right now for... 
uh, uh, the strength that you give us, oh God, uh, to teach and preach the truth of this word, even in the midst and face of persecution and infirmities, we thank you and we glory in it because your grace is sufficient. Touch those who are sick. Uh, touch those who are dealing with issues in their mind, oh God. Give them strength, build them up, oh God, in their inner man. Amen. Understanding that the flesh is not profitable to us, but Father God, it's what, what we have done in our spirit, oh God. We thank you right now. We ask you to help us to put no confidence in the flesh, but Father God, do those things uh, that are pleasing to you. Help us, uh, 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 give us the opportunity this, this holiday season to preach the gospel, oh God. Give us this, this opportunity to teach somebody and bring them into the knowledge of the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We'll, uh,